The Goat Owls is back, highlighting the biggest winners, losers, and takeaways of week two so far, like we do every single week. Let's start with by far the biggest winners of week two. Starting once again with the New Orleans Saints. They started this off last week in, in this video, and now they're doing it again here because they've been absolutely outstanding. A, a pleasant surprise for sure. Kamara the star of the show in their 44-19 win over the Cowboys. Not the Panthers, but the Cowboys. That's what people question. Can they do it against good teams? Will they play who was supposed to be a good team, the Dallas Cowboys, and they dominate them. They do it again. But again, Camaro, the star of the show. Derek Carr, pretty solid overall. Uh, the defense, obviously, once again, solid. But I didn't, something that I really want to highlight besides Camaro because he was great. Uh, I mean, Shahid was great. Alave was great. That that ball, that contested catch he had at the goal line was awesome. You know, more than just a downfield speed, you know, tracking threat. But the coaching, coaching really stood out because the issue going in this game with the Saints was, it might sound crazy, but the offensive line, because last week they were dominant, but that was kind of the question with the Saints going into the year. And they play this great pass rush that has a, a unique type blitz uh, under Mike Zimmer in the Cowboys, but mainly led by their pass rusher, Micah Parsons, but they do have more than that. So will it be that much different from the matchup last week? Would it be an issue? But they kind of planned around it, and it doesn't always go to plan, but in this game, it did. They they kind of limited Carr, and Carr did great, and they, they pass protected. They allowed one sack. Carr had one interception, but they pass protected, but they didn't want to overdo it with Carr. So being able to stick what they know, we talked about going into the year, that they're going to pound the football in this new system, and Kamara looking like prime elite Kamara, it worked out. They were able to limit the passing game, but they executed it in the passing game when they had their moments too. So I love that. And the def defensively, Dennis Allen, I thought, did a great job. There's some teams that, for an example, you go against the Cowboys team, and CeeDee Lamb is a game breaker, and you focus you know, so much on him and – and not the rest of things that it kind of backfires. But the Saints realize like that guy's gonna play good. That you know, he Lamb's gonna play good. It's what good coaches do around the game plan. You don't focus too much on one guy. He's gonna play good no matter what. But that guy by himself, we're not gonna let him beat us by himself. So they locked down on everything else. They made they made Dak go to different options. Dak didn't play too well because of Saints defense, because of that game plan. And when even when Dak made a play, it was a third and long play, he bought time and hit a tight window pass. Like Even when he didn't make a play, the Saints made it so tough on him. They made him go to other options, and the options aren't too good. You got other guys, you got guys, got, you got guys falling down at receiver for the Cowboys, so and just looking a little sloppy. It's, it's, we're, it's looking like the Cowboys need other receivers and the Saints made it look like that. So I thought the game plan, it's not always going to work perfectly. It's one of those things like where if it backfires, like if they stick to the run too much and they need Derek Carr to make a play and maybe they, you know, it, it's probably going to happen at some point it happens to every team, but I thought the game plan was perfect. Uh, they were the more prepared, more ready team. Uh, and they were, you know, once again, one of the most dominant teams out there in a big victory and not against the Panthers this week against the Cowboys. So very much impressed with the Saints. Uh, we'll, we'll see if they can continue on with this run. They'll play a tough team. The Eagles next should be interesting. How about the Arizona Cardinals rolling the Rams 41 to 10? I know the Rams are very beat up and the Cardinals should win this game based on the situation with there, but over there, but 41 to 10 and there's a lot of positivity, a lot of, a lot of dominance. You know, it was a snot pounding out there. Uh, you know, for the Cardinals at home. Uh, and that's good to see. But again, what's best to see is the positivity because Marvin Harrison Jr., everyone down on him, the media ripping him, you know, fans. And then right off the bat, looking dominant. Uh, maybe he needed last week. Maybe he needed that, obviously. So he got going. The passing game's going. The running game's going. James Conner did, did super well. You know, besides just the points, the score, and how early this game was over, Gardick had three sacks. I mean, getting st overall five sacks on Matt Stafford, you know, a team that's not really expected to get a ton of pressure. Uh, you know, Agilari going down before the year, and they don't have the best group on paper when it comes to getting after the quarterback, but they did it in this game. They get a veteran quarterback, and I know the Rams are a little beat up. Don't really care. They came out here and looked really solid, and I'm – you know, I'm I'm putting that on top of last week. And yes, last week was a loss, but I was kind of impressed with the Cardinals last week. Uh, you know, w against the Bills, I know they they blew a comeback, they blew a lead, and let let that happen. Uh, there was still some questions on defense, but they cleaned a lot of things up this week. And are they going to clean them up for good? Is it is it all fixed for good? Not saying that, but I've been impressed with them. It's a team that. I'm going to buy into a little bit. I, I don't, you know, and I don't usually do that this early. I think they can, you know, are they going to make it? I'm not saying they're going to be a deep playoff team, but 
they can make some noise, and I think they're only going to get better from here. So that's something I feel from these last two weeks. So you actually could find positives. They're at, they've taken the right steps, even with starting with that loss with Buffalo. There's a lot again. Positivity is the word I keep using. Just Marvin Harrison bouncing back. You know, everything was good in this game. Either the offensive line played well, James Conner was great, the defense was great across the board, tight in coverage, uh, really good pressure. But now let's get. You probably thought I forgot. Let's get to Kyler Murray. I did not forget. I thought he, this. I thought this was his best game as a keyword professional quarterback, which is going to sound funny because he's had some really, really good games as a professional, right? There was times where in the in his early years where he looked like an MVP candidate, but in Kingsbury offense early in the season when they were tough to game plan for, then they got away with a lot of stuff, a lot of backyard BS football to be honest, but it's football, and it just felt like a college-style quarterback in offense, and it was never going to last, and it was never going to win the big games. He looked like a professional quarterback today uh you know running an NFL system and he looked damn good I mean he had probably the play of the day um you know with an insane you know escaping pressure throwing on the run and but it was more than just that I thought he played well last year last week excuse excuse me the stats would not show it but I'm extremely impressed with the Cardinals but with Kyler Kyler Murray it's somebody I'm really getting excited about here and I'm glad to see Marvin Harrison Jr get going and get his confidence going. Like I said, he probably needed last week, but James Conner running the ball well. It's a team to watch here. It's a team that I, I put, I'll put stock in the Cardinals. I don't want to buy too much into anyone, not even you know, the Saints are dominating right now. I'm a little cautious. I've learned my lesson, and I've always, you know, a lot of us always known that. Like You can't buy in too much in the first couple of weeks, but it's a team I get excited about. We're not going to sit here and say they're doing this, they're doing that. It's a team I get excited about. I think they have long, uh, long-term future a good long-term future, perhaps, but we'll see what keeps happening with them. Uh, good one against the Lions next week, so excited about that for Arizona. The Vikings make the big winners list once again, kind of like the Saints, and the Saints have looked a little more explosive, but in terms of they played the Giants last week, right? So we weren't really sure, and now they play the Niners, who last week I thought clear-cut looked like the best team in football, and at least the best team in the NFC, and the Vikings handle business at home, and the score might not show it. It got a little sketchy if you're a Vikings fan. I'm a Vikings fan, so you know that I felt like they were going to blow that game knowing what they do in the past um, so it did get a little a little scary there a little sketchy and they shouldn't let that happen but if you watch this game the Vikings completely outplayed the Niners the Niners had some good production and Mason was breaking tackles getting yards after the catch Debo was making some good catches but uh, the Vikings you know it was a 23-7 team was the final it felt like they outplayed them by a bit more than that so it's a good look for them at least on that part uh, being able to do that to possibly the best team in football or one of the best teams in football. I thought Darnold played great. Even the interception, yeah, be a little more careful, throw that a little more outside, but great play by Fred Warner, who was unreal in this game. Um, but I thought Darnold, that throw from the back of the end zone, one of the plays of the week, just unreal to Jefferson. Jefferson was lights out. He went down. They still found a way to win. I thought Naylor was key. Scored a touchdown last week. This week, he had a good block down the field for Jefferson on that touchdown. Ty Chandler was on this week. Last week was Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones had a nice slip screen, but then fumbled. It almost cost them the game in this one. Naylor was really good. They got playmakers that stand out. Darnold looks, it looks like a totally different Sam Darnold. That's awesome to see. It's a well-coached team. Uh, defensively, they got playmakers. A guy that really stood out just in, in general this week for football on the defensive side of the ball, Blake Cashman was unreal, but another guy that's standing out for them looks like one of their best defensive players. Andrew Van Ginkle has been extremely instinctive and great. Patrick Jones is racking up the sacks. Uh, you know, they, they have a number of guys. It feels like they can make plays, but I think Brian Flores is really the highlight uh, of this defense. Uh, and, it, it, you know, what they had in the year they were good in the playoffs, you know, going from Don Tell to Brian Flores, it's just insane. And like night and day doesn't even explain it. Um, so they're fortunate to have him, and but they, you know, Vikings got a good matchup, I guess, going against Brock Purdy and the Niners. Uh, you know, Purdy struggles a little bit with them, and uh, this was a this was a good win. It got a little too close for comfort. They they should put them away, but you go and play one of the better teams. I thought last last week alone they're the best team, and just go out there uh, and put on that performance, put on a game like that where they were the better. I don't think they're going to be a better team at the end, at the end of the day, but today they were the better team out there. So that is good to see and why they're in a, in the big winners column here. Uh, once again, two weeks in a row, is it going to last sometimes almost every year? The first two weeks are lies, you know, but it, you got to get out there, get out of there with the win. The Vikings are doing that and they're looking pretty good through two weeks. You pretty much have to put the bills up here after their dominant win on Thursday night football, 31 to 10 against the Miami dolphins. I mean, just a big win in week two, at AFC East battle in Miami. A lot of people expecting the dolphins to win. Uh, the bills didn't really show a ton, which doesn't you know, there's not a lot of to jump out of your seat 
about, but I think it's a good thing. You know, it's still kind of to be determined this team's identity. We know they're going to be a good team, but, uh, you know, to be able to win that easily, and James Cook really stood out, obviously, was super explosive. The defense, you know, I think what stood out was the defensive coaching. You know, Babich uh, getting that game plan ready with that secondary and just really locking down uh, Tyreek Hill and keeping guys covered for just long enough so the, they got pressure on Tua. So I, I, I was... Uh, I was impressed and a little surprised at how well that secondary and how well the coverages were called and how well they, they were prepared for that game. Um, you know, because remember, they, they usually play good against the Dolphins, but missing their two-star safeties from the past, obviously one with Miami, I thought that had them at a disadvantage. But I, I, secondary, young secondary played well, so you got to give them credit. I thought a lot of it was coaching, so that's fantastic. My one thing I'm still wondering about with the Bills is the run defense. Uh, it didn't look too good in this game. Uh, but they kind of took that away from the Dolphins by being dominant. Like, Josh Allen could have had a monster game if they needed him to. You kind of can feel that. Uh, James Cook had the monster game. But, yeah, I, I think it's more so they have to be a big winner because it's a dominant win. They didn't have to show much. Like, they just walked to victory. Like, it was that easy. Uh, you know, they got stuff in their back pocket. A, a pretty good showing for the new defensive coaching. But, yeah, look, you know, going to Miami, dominating, but not just dominating. AFC, you know, how the AFC East is going to be this week. You know, the the Bills being that only 2-0 team, especially, you know, with the Patriots losing, they beat the Dolphins, and the Jets already had a loss in week one. I think all of that just, you know, they have to be on the board for, for one of the biggest winners after that dominant victory uh, against the Dolphins. And the Raiders pull off probably the surprise of either the year or at least the week so far, winning 26-23 to against the Ravens. It wasn't pretty, right? It wasn't pretty. I hesitated to put them in the big winners because it wasn't pretty. The Ravens had production through the air on the ground. I think it was the matter of them just running the ball more. But there was a lot of good from the Raiders. And for them to be able to find a way against, I know it's an 0-1 team, but a really good team that they were supposed to be outmatched against, mainly finding ways, you know, when everything isn't perfect. That's what I love about the Raiders uh, Max Crosby, obviously the one, one of the best, I, I think the best defensive player in football, uh, my opinion, but, uh, was that force, that impact, that presence again today and a reason, uh, you know, the Raiders are able to do this. You're not the only reason though. Love. We talked about going into the season, why the Raiders could be sneaky. The weapons, Devonta Adams was that big time possible elite weapon that he is. And then getting Brock Bowers going even more compared to last week. So they have mismatch. They have mismatch weapons, like guys that you have to account for, not just that, but guys you have to deal with Gardner Minshew You also completed 30 passes. You play, complete 30 passes against the Baltimore Ravens. Only incomplete eight. I know there was an interception again. It wasn't pretty. The run game's a disaster right now. That's a problem. And again, that's why I hesitated a little bit. Wasn't pretty. The run game is pretty brutal. But for them not to have a run game, complete 30 passes on the Ravens, win the game. The weapons kind of show out on both sides of the ball. Being clutch, you know, Carlson hitting the kicks. And it just it felt like going, right before half, I'm like, okay, here's the Ravens with a good push right before half. And they come out of the second half and they're going. I'm, I, I really thought the Ravens were going to go win big at that point. I was a little surprised they weren't already winning by big. Uh, and then the Raiders found a way. So, um, just being able, again, being able to find a way. There's stud players showing out. I, and I, I like the way Getsy called this game. He's been getting a lot of uh, ripping even before he started with the Raiders here. You know, going for his, from his Bears days, which were recent. Uh, I thought he called a really good game. That last touchdown was a really nice design, a really nice play call, I should say. I saw some really good good designs. Just got to be executed. And they you start seeing the execution a little bit more and more. So maybe they'll get more consistent. Just a big win, a big surprising win. So you have to put the Raiders in the big win, the big win column. And some more winners we got to highlight. Kind of defeats the purpose if we talk about every single winner and loser. Uh, we'll talk about every team's performance in Monday night's video. So make sure uh, you turn notifications on and get ready for that one. But Buccaneers, got to shout out to Buccaneers. They're 2-0. They actually look like one of the better teams so far if you base it off of the two weeks. They beat the Lions, which was unexpected, 20-16. to Obviously depleted with injuries, it felt like, especially in the secondary, uh, and they still find a way. They kind of, you know, very good job coaching by Todd Bowles. They make it so Goff has to beat them through the air and he did not do that obviously so that was a really good game plan uh, not a whole lot going for them Godwin had a really good game Baker on the ground he made some plays he had that one drive that he had a rushing touchdown on that was fantastic uh, you know it wasn't the prettiest game but they pull off the upset they were actually big underdogs in that game too so big one for the Bucs they're two and all oh it's just so unlucky with the injuries because they would be and they still can be legit but very much impressed overall with Tampa Bay
The Chargers taking care of business, doing what we expected, but maybe a little bit more too. 26 to three, they beat the Panthers, who are really struggling. Another good outing for for the defense, out there pretty much locked down, causing issues for Bryce Young. And then offensively, they did what they need, they needed to do. We kind of talked about Harbaugh is going to take it easy, you know, pound the football, run the clock, and get out of there with the W, not get upset. Uh, J.K. Dobbins carried the offense a little bit, but good to see Quinton Johnston getting going. But the Chargers two and zero, looking pretty good, especially on defense when managing the clock in the game what a win for the green bay packers without jordan love 16 to 10 over the colts as underdogs what malik willis in there yeah they're they're you know pretty big winners here they almost let the colts come back they could have put the game away besides the josh jacobs fumble right on like the half yard line in the first half felt like they were already gonna put the game away besides the fumble which can't happen he ran extremely well ran all over the colts uh, malik willis did his job uh, defense, that's the big thing here. Stepping up after a bad week last week. I didn't think the field really affected them, as well as the Eagles. Both teams played on the field last week. But, um, you know, so the defense looking good. Xavier McKinney's been great. So, um, you know, it's a good team. It's a well-coached team. There's a reason I picked them in the Super Bowl this year because it's a very complete, improving team that is very well-coached, like I said. So, good job for the Packers. I mean, that's that's a huge win to kind of keep it everything alive while love is out. And the biggest losers of Week 2. Got to start with Thursday Night Football, the Dolphins. I mean, a big thing obviously is Tua going down he's going to be out for a little bit so I mean you could say they're a loser because of that but that I mean obviously that's big a big part of them that, that could hurt them going forward but that's a small part of why the Dolphins are one of the biggest losers and the Tua thing's probably going to be an excuse going forward but they got major problems other than that you know Tua's struggling offensive line's really bad it's worse than it's been in years and they've had some bad ones uh, Mike McDaniel was awful in that game calling plays should have stuck to the run. The Bills couldn't stop the run. Just overthinking things really bad. He just doesn't stick to what's working. And then defensively, they just cannot stop the run. It is brutal how wide open those holes were for James Cook. So they and you know without Christian Wilkins, so they have major problems. Um, you know, with two of them, obviously way better, but with them or not, they have they're worse than they were in the past. And they usually start well and have that crazy home field advantage. So they're major losers. Um, you know, it's again, it really feels like it's early, very early, but it really feels like a team that has declined uh, compared to past years here. Another major loser is the Detroit Lions, you know, going against the Bucks, who are a good team, but end up having a bunch of injuries during their good win last week. And then, you know, the Lions got to play the Rams, who were depleted. Now they catch a break, well, you know, how the Bucks are uh, with their health. And they, they should, the Lions, you saw it last week against the Rams, they want to throw the ball more. They don't want to rely on the run. So they're trying to do that. They try to do it this week and, and they can't. They put the ball, the, the game in Goff's hands and he just could not do it. Two interceptions don't beat him up too much for the first one. The second one's one of the worst you'll see this week. Uh, but then once they realize what's happening and they're in this game still and Gibbs is running well, they, you know, they go away from that. You know, Vita Vea goes down for the Bucks during this game too. Uh, you know, so it's a, it's a tough one. The, the Lions should win. They convert that crazy fake punt as well. So they were acting like they were down by a ton. And, and you know, given the circumstances, uh, they must win this game. They're a heavy favorite. So it's not a good look for the future, really. And it's, you know, and they'll be fine. They'll be really good, I believe. But, it, you know, kind of feels like they got the run game needs to be part. And it's dominant when it works, but it has to be part of their game. And, it's it cannot be on golf, which could be a problem if they're trying to win championship level games, you know, NFC Championship, Super Bowl. So uh, not the best look for them, you know, this week uh, as the game, given the circumstances, they should take care of business and win. Another loser is going to be the Colts. I mean, you kind of get a gift. Jordan Love's not playing in this game. The star quarterback of the Packers, they got Malik Willis in there, who was just on the Titans a few weeks ago, and you can't find a way to win. Anthony Richardson really struggled. I didn't think Steichen called a good game either. I you know, overthinking things, just keep handing the Taylor up the middle. Uh, just completely outplayed. They tried to come back in this game, but Richardson turned the ball over a little too much. He's usually hit or miss, was mainly missing this game. But yeah, look out of sorts. Yeah, option plays or some wrong reads, and they just take too long. They don't look like they're ready to run those. It feels like so. Yeah, not prepared. Bad coaching, but mainly bad execution. They have a run defense problem, a big one, and they usually are, you know, typically the Colts are pretty good stopping a run, but through two weeks, pretty bad. But again, you kind of get a gift with Love being injured and it being Malik Willis out there, and, and you should be able to stack the box. You know they're going to run, stop the run. They can't do it. So it is a really bad look for the Indianapolis Colts uh, who let one slip away here. It almost got out of hand early. They were kind of lucky to still be in it. So tough one for them, one of the bigger losers this week. And the Ravens have to be one of the major losers as well. I mean, not just because they get, you know, 
upset big time. Like, they're not supposed to lose that game. And home opener, much better team against the Raiders. They're coming off a loss. Extra rest for the Ravens getting to watch, you know, the, the, the Raiders over last weekend. That makes them a loser, but that's not even just it. Like, I kind of, I review all these games, and I'm going with this one. Like, how in the hell do the Ravens lose this game? I mean, going, what's you know, given what's going on during this game. I mean, they're running the ball pretty well. I mean, the issue is they didn't run enough. Like, keep running Derrick Henry. Lamar needs to run more. I know they didn't want him to overdo it. He's probably gassed after last week, but... Um, just not enough runs, not not enough, and maybe the Raiders did a good job, kind of keep them in the pocket, give them credit there. But they they threw fairly well. I mean, I, you know, I guess it's an issue though, is you got to be able to throw more and more consistently and hit the big plays. And we and we saw them unable to do it at the end, you know, towards the end in both last week and this week. And that's kind of the same thing that is keeping the Ravens from winning championship football when it matters most. So, um, but. They stay shut down the run. I guess how they lost is, you know, they could have ran the ball a little bit more. Uh, they could execute a little more through the air, and, and they let Gardner Minshew complete 30 passes, 30 out of 38, then throw for an insane amount of yardage given how many throws there was. But still, I guess that'll do it. But, man, the end of the first half and then the start of the second half, I thought they are going to roll. I thought they are going to it's just It's just extremely confusing and disappointing how they ended up losing this game. Um, so that's... It makes you think they're, you know, the two things. It they're not as good as past years. It's still early, so it's a question mark. And yeah, it kind of just shows up once again. Like this is kind of a reason they're not able to. Like what what ha- what happened the last two weeks uh, on you know why they need to go back to the run game. They can't fully win a game going through the air. It's a reason they can't win those championship or those huge games down the stretch. You know, in the playoffs, AFC title game. Uh, so again, another team that's it's not the best look. I'm sure they're gonna figure it out, and start winning football games, but. Again, not the best look, uh, you know, today in week two as they're 0-2, a little bit of a surprise. And some more losers. The Cowboys get upset by the Saints. Really, they got destroyed, and, you know, Dak was a little flustered. It, you know, the main issue on offense, and they'll figure it out, but the main issue right now is they might need more weapons other than CeeDee Lamb, carrying the group big time, and that's kind of an issue and why it feels like maybe they're a little worse on offense. Defensively, awful outing, really struggled on the run. That's kind of carrying over from last year. They struggled stopping the run. It did feel a little bit like sloppy week two stuff. A lot of it was not having Bland out there, which he'll come back. So I do think they'll get back. I'm not really worried long-term in the defense. Again, not thrilled about the run defense. Um, but, yeah, overall, bad loss. The Jags, the Jags, you know, given the Deshaun Watson distraction, how they played last week, uh, you know, that they how they play away, usually the Browns. So I, the Jags should handle business here. Trying to make a late comeback, just really stale for the most part in this game. Very disappointing. Doug Peterson, another bad outing for him. I thought, you know, the run was kind of working. They were acting like they were acting like the, the run was taken away. They were down by so much they had to throw, throw, throw. I understand throwing a little bit more in that scenario, but I thought bad coaching again. So Doug Peterson, since the second half of last week and then this week, I, you know, because I thought ETM was playing well. Trevor Lawrence taking that safety, that was brutal. I know he didn't have a lot of time. You just, you just cannot do that. So um, tough one there. Tough in- Ingram going down right before the game. Uh, Panthers, I mean, the worst team in football right now. Not a whole lot to talk about there. They lost. They got outplayed. Nothing surprising, but they're one of the bigger losers this week. And the Rams got dominated, but, I mean, I didn't expect that. But, really, when we sit down and think about it, like, really, when the team's that hurt, that depleted, which is a week to prepare, what really, what to, should we expect? So, we're not going to hammer the Rams too, too much. But, yeah, those were your losers. A lot of big, big losers. Um, you know, very disappointing, but luckily – Sloppy football tends to be a thing here in week, uh, you know, two, much like one, and sometimes it carries over to three and four. That's usually about it, though. If you're sloppy in five, you're probably not that great of a team. Uh, but there you have it. have it. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. Again, stay tuned for the Monday night video. We'll talk about every team's performance. We'll grade them. We'll put them in tiers. Uh, it's a fun one. We added the rotation. Then we have our week three content. So make sure you subscribe, turn notifications on, so you don't miss any of that key content for recapping this week and for next week but that's gonna do it for this one thanks for watching goodbye